Janet. How are you? Okay. <coughs> so, Chris, Janet, you've you've asked us to come and, and talk to you about some paperwork that you needed um, processed. Yeah. Um. <coughs> I'm tired. I don't want to do this anymore. I've had enough. I just want some peace now. She's just knocking around this now, this Dallas is. Yeah. Just, it's just another, another thing <coughs> icing on the cake, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it may be that it's time to look at the, the next stage in the journey and you've obviously had some time and you've thought about it and you've, you've started to complete an advanced health directive which is a, a good way of making sure that we're supporting your wishes and that you know, your, your wishes are the most important thing in your treatment. And it, it sounds like you are tired and that you're, you're ready to look at other options. So what we can do is we can go through this advanced health directive and I can bring in my colleagues from palliative care. Now, palliative care can be a bit freaky for people to hear but their job is to make sure that you are looked after as well as possible. They are the experts in this part of the, the treatment. So we'll go through the advanced health directive and um, there's a pen here. Okay. <clears throat> so Sarah and I, as a medical and nursing professional, can witness your signature, Janet. So we need to put in the date. So it's first 2016. <clears throat> okay. Made by Janet Nelson of 123. Alphonse Lane Subiaco, born 5th of July 1964. <clears throat> okay, so the treatment decision is in the following circumstances, terminal illness. You refuse consent to artificial feeding, to cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Yes. So you don't want CPR. Okay. And you're also refusing consent to further dialysis. I am. Okay. And your second treatment decision is in the circumstances of a terminal illness, you consent to palliative care. Yes, please. Yes. Okay. And you've had a chance to discuss that between yeah. We have fine with that. Okay. So, Janet, I need you to sign here. I don't think I can. Can you sign? Okay. If, if you're actually a little bit too weak and unwell, Chris, I, I can have you sign the form for Janet. Um, as I'm confident that you're not making this decision under any duress, that you've had a chance to consider what your what your needs and wants are. Okay. <coughs> I'll witness it. And address. Okay, and then we, we date it. So that's the okay, and then Sarah needs to sign as the second witness. I'm sorry, it's gone so badly for you. These things, eh? Sarah was saying that your daughter. 
came and had a visit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I saw Oscar, didn't we? And little Molly. I did. I did. That was special. That was special. Mm. See them. Yeah. Say goodbye. It was very hard, but that was very special. So what happens now, Jana, is that um, we leave the advance directive with you. You can put a copy on your record. What I'll do is I won't lose touch with you entirely, but I'm going to be referring you to my colleagues from palliative care. Um, so that's a really strong team of people. So there's a medical practitioner, a nurse who's an expert in palli palliation issues, um, a social worker. And they may call in other people as, as they're needed, depending on what happens. Okay. I'm confident that I'm going to be handing the bulk of your treatment over to the best possible people. Thank you. Uh, hospice now then? We can look at transferring Janet. Um, it'll take a few days to arrange that. Yeah, obviously stopping the um, the dialysis treatment is going to mean that we are getting very close to the end. But, um, yeah, there's some, there's some beautiful hospice people. Thank you very much for everything you've done. I'll make a copy for your chart. I'll be back in a few minutes. Thank you. Take some observations. I'm just going to get you a sandwich or anything. Yeah, thank you. So again, these sorts of simulation scenarios can bring up feelings for people and again there are services that are available to you if you've got anything that you feel that you'd like to discuss with a trained professional. So based on what we saw just then, what would you say was the highest priorities for, for Janet now? Making sure life is comfortable and like, making sure she's pain, have pain free, <laughs> that she has comfortable the last couple of days, that her family's uh, their needs are met. Yeah. That her wishes specifically are fulfilled, like with the... Um... With the Advanced Health Directive, yeah. Yeah. I noticed in the Advanced Healthcare Directives it says you've sought legal advice before making your advanced care directive? It can be an optional thing that you can do, but it's not, um, it's not something that you're required to do. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of the um, steps leading up to her making that decision, she'd just been um, having some dialysis, but because of the chemo, her body wasn't tolerating it. So dialysis wasn't effective, and she's sort of nine months down with a fairly significant um, pancreatic cancer diagnosis so obviously the cancer's spreading and the treatment's not being very effective for her. Were there any other concerns that you as health professionals had in watching that scenario about the patient and about the patient's care? There was a lot of touching from the nurse. Um, the patient's body was, she was holding onto her husband's hand with her far hand and she just wasn't engaging with the nurse but the nurse kept rubbing her which she might not have wanted she just wanted to be with her oh, she just wanted to be with her husband um yeah that's it just the body language to watch the body language of the patient good observation yeah yeah and i guess again it comes back to that thing that everybody is so individual in what it is that they're wanting as that part of their journey. In the scenario as well, there was a lot of emotion from the husband. Yes. Um, and I think that not only the focus has to be on the patient, but also on him. Nobody actually asked if he was okay. Um, his facial expression was quite, he didn't want to sign that. It, it, the, I got the impression it didn't sit well with him. Um, obviously it was his wife's decision ultimately, but I think that some focus could have gone on to him as well. What about cultural concerns? 
So um, she's about to be um, transferred across to the palliative care team and one would hope that um, any spiritual needs would be managed along the way because it is such a, a continuum of people's needs and wants. And um, certainly people who may not have been particularly spiritual during their well period may find that that's some sort of a consolation as they're nearing the end. So it would be important for us as her healthcare team to touch base and see if there were any spiritual care needs or pastoral care that Janet would have wanted us to, um, to bring into the picture. Now, you guys were the flies on the wall, so tell us what we did well in that scenario. And then you can tell us what we could have improved upon. Yes, ma'am. Um, unlike the first scenario where you, it was a bit ambiguous and we were left a bit sort of like, how long has she got? You made it quite clear like this is your last few days and, and then that was the end if she stopped it. That was quite good because um, I know if like someone didn't tell me and I was just like, oh, stop the dialysis, maybe I'd be thinking, do I have a couple of days? Do I have a couple of weeks? Do I have a couple of months? Like that would have been nice for them to know how long they had left. Getting her to speak in her own words what her wishes were in the Advanced Health Directive rather than you say, in this event, you want this, rather than asking her, if this was to happen, what do you want? Um, gaining informed consent, so you said like what would be the outcome of not continuing the renal dialysis without going into too much detail, but they had that knowledge about what decision they were actually making and how it was going to affect them in the end. Yeah, and we, we had the insights of some of the um, side effects of, of discontinuing dialysis from the Indigenous gentleman this morning when his team was talking about um, how that would impact on, on his treatment. Um, but potentially someone that's not from a health background might not know that. So just being clear about what sort of symptoms would be happening by making the choice to discontinue dialysis and also the ways that we can manage that so that they're not impacting on her clarity of mind, her quality of life. So what could we have done better? Um, in getting the husband to sign the form. Um, that, as they said over there, he didn't look comfortable in doing it and she was alert and orientated enough to do it. I know she was weak and she was tired but she was still alert and orientated enough to sign the form. So you think we should have explored with him a bit more about what was going on for him? Yeah, or find a way for her to sign the form so that it was 100% her yeah. choice. I'm curious about how someone, I can't remember if it was the doctor or the nurse, apologised for how badly things had gone. Oh, that was the doctor, yeah. yeah. I didn't like that choice of words, yeah. just because it was kind of like, oh, well, this has been a pretty bad run for you, yeah. hasn't it? Mm. <laughs> bad, bad job of the hospital. Like, yeah, it put a lot of blame back on the healthcare worker, but also I felt like discredited the situation a little bit. Like, yeah. cancer is bad, yes, but I don't know. Maybe it just made it seem a little like, an afterthought yeah. or I don't yeah. know. It just didn't sit right with A little me. bit sort of off the cuff, flippant, mm, yeah, yeah, just tacked yeah. on because this will sound good. Yeah, mm. yeah. And I, um, you said that you weren't <coughs> done with her, but that you'd hand over, which was good, but then you didn't say in what um, aspect you would mm. continue your care with her. So she just, yeah. So you made the comment saying that I'm not finished with you, but there was no like further discussion about So this would be yeah. what the role would be role. going forward. Or what they wanted from you, because they, yeah. they may say, no, you know what you've done in your job, I'm happy to just move over to palliative care now. Yeah. Or, but yeah, they didn't have, that discussion didn't happen. Yeah, so that was less focus yeah. on the patient and more focus on the doctor's feelings. Yeah. Yeah, well done. Um, I kind of felt like, um, Nothing was touched on, you know, now you can change your mind if, I mean, obviously she had a few days left, but, you know, when it gets down to where at the moment of impending death, we kind of all go, no, 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 I wish I'd done something different. Like, I feel like there was nothing touched on, you know, in the next 24, 48 hours, if you change your mind, you know, you can tell us there is, you know, without making it a bleak outcome, but, you know, you can talk to us about this and there is um, things that potentially could 
Mm. And for Chris as the husband, it was it was seemed that it was very final. The signing of the the paperwork was like, well, this is the end. Yeah, and for him, I mean, that's his loved one. He obviously doesn't want to watch his wife die. Um, you know, if she decides that she wants to change her mind, of course, he's going to flip his around and go, okay, well, let's fight this. But um, yeah, I just felt that there wasn't enough emphasis around, you know, you can change your mind. There is still a little bit of time left to, you know, think about this before we do. Yeah. So as her husband, what do you think he's feeling? I was just wondering from a legal standpoint, did it have to be the husband that signed or could the medical staff sign knowing that? He could sign it as her immediate next of kin. Okay, but I, I don't know. It, that's such a brave and courageous thing to do. I meant legally, if he didn't want to sign it, could the medical staff have done it? Like if he didn't feel comfortable or would that process just not happen if he doesn't sign it? He would need to sign it. So speaking to people, I haven't... I've had a couple of close family members pass away, but um, then speaking to friends who've lost um, children and stuff, it's after the death that th there's this gap where we're all there for them, all there for them, all there for them. They are buried and then there's nothing. Um, and I think maybe, I don't know how far the services go or how long, but maybe there needs to be an emphasis um, on more what happens after that because there's a, it just goes really quiet because everyone brings you meals and calls and then people don't know what to say. Um, so I'm just, I don't know, like would the social worker continue on well past that or is Sadly it's a not. big burden on the... Mm. But you, you're absolutely right and it's a really valuable insight that um, when somebody dies, mm. there is this flurry of activity that goes on. There's, mm. there's funeral arrangements to be made. Um, there's sort of an outpouring of grief from people that know them. So there's floral tributes. Um, you know, comments on social media, so that there's this incredible um, whirlwind of emotions that mm. happens, and then after the funeral, things do go quiet, mm. and that is probably a time that people really would like someone to to actually reach out. And the touch CNS back. on the ward that I worked on um, started up a. At three months, we had a bereavement file that we used to put in the paper with the details of the family members. Us nurses used to send them a card um, and then the CNS took it on herself and organised. She would ring the family member three months post to make sure they were going all right and then refer them to other services if they weren't coping. Which is a lovely thing to do. All right, so what we're going to do is just have a quick bio break. That's if you've got any biological needs, now's the time to take care of them. Um, if you head back here in... 10 minutes, that'll give us a chance to just set up for the next simulation.